I think uh, regulatory assets, as you rightly said, Gaurav, is uh, and uh, backed by even the delayed payments by some of the discoms is actually becoming a challenge. And I interact with a lot of uh, developers. Uh, you know, I mean, there is a limited pool of capital, of course, at the end of the day, and uh, lenders have to be paid on time. So, in spite of everything uh, that uh, we are all can go about, but then. This is causing a big challenge and I thought some of you, if you have some comments there, we call them regulatory assets and I mean we are trying to even get them funded even as of now while we speak. But then the problem remains a cost. You rightly said that there is a double-edged sword there. On one side is the tariff that you have to still control, meet and get your cost of generation in line. On the other, I mean uh, the safeguard duties, GSTs and all getting built into the tariffs that you have paid up front added to the costs. I agree with you, I think. Uh, so if uh, something Mr. Mopatra or somebody else here would like to add to that, but otherwise, then we will move on to the next issue, please. Uh, like we are focusing on high yield. Ultimately, when uh, like Aura was saying that you have capped the tariff at 2.44 and cancel the tenders and things like that, people go into very minute details like we do in the model to see where are we getting our desired IRR and how much we will uh, be able to save in case there is an uncertainty and if that uncertainty comes, can we save ourselves? Because ultimately the equity and everything coming from outside today, you need that IRR to be promised to people. One of the things that is coming out is the evacuation. If people slowly gravitate towards the high insulation areas like Rajasthan, little Rajasthan land is not an issue is the evacuation and uh, the second factor what I realized recently is that you go at 400 kV. 400 kV is not economical below say around the 300 megawatt or 400 megawatt capacity. Now 300, 400 megawatt capacity at around 5 acres per megawatt is requires a contiguous patch of 1500 acres or 2000 acres of land. And these patches are not available everywhere. So people will balance the availability of land the cost of land, you go to Anandpur today, the cost of land is double that of uh, Rajasthan. So whether a developer will experiment with um, uh, Anandpur, Andhra, uh, uh, Tamil Nadu, or say, I mean MP I'm just keeping out because Mr. Srinivas going there, it has been a completely differently structured thing. Number Point number two is when you talk about policy, you should not look at this like ENTPC and all, they are executing agencies. They are not the owners of policies, they are not the formulators of the policies. The formulators of policies is government. Now why MP is a success story is no, 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 not, not exactly flattering, but basically the people who like Mr. Srivastava who have interpreted those policies to bring it down to practical. And that does not happen. So that is something we have to understand that when we go to Seki and ask them to change policy, their hands are tied. They push us to MNR or to state government and the state governments have to act. So policy level will have to realize where the policy levels are. Third thing, the forex thing that uh, Gaurav was mentioning, uh, when Mr. Goel was the minister, he had initiated saying that, you remember there was a time when it dipped drastically and practically everybody was hit. Because today if I go to hedge, I don't know, is a hedge available beyond a year? I, uh, maximum two to three years. Two to three years, I will get a hedge. I mean, I will get a forward, right? And so, so the forward is not available beyond three years. Well, okay, I mean, right. uh, I mean, it does not align. Seven, eight, ten years actually is very, very difficult to get. It's very expensive. We are trying to get it. We had done an SPDA. We, we had formed an agency, SPDA, so we run that still. So yeah, there we had done an analysis of it, so that we had taken that uh, normal depreciation of rupee against dollar for last 20 years has been averaged around 3.8%. So we just took at the trend, we assumed that like anything in finance, we take that past is the indicator of future, we thought that India would be better than that. So we will say that this is the thing. So we made a kind of one slide where we said, if we make a fund, whoever contributes to it, that mechanism and you was the way policy as we can take out, there's a valid point. There is no point blocking public money uh, if private money can be 
used for that. So having said that, if we have, we, we, we came out that after within eight years, this fund becomes positive. That means it doesn't make any loss anymore. So if we take that and cover this up, and possibly give a comfort, say something like a mega insurance today. Mega is not going sub sovereign. Mega is sovereign. So a combination of kind of giving a comfort of something to the mega so that it can go to sub sovereign, possibly, we don't know. Anyway, we had an egoistic stand that will not take mega insurance, but that's gone now. We are okay. But then there has to be a common ground. So forex. The material pricing is absolutely, and another thing is the material is not only 70% uh, panel. The solar industry is essentially panels and metal. That means copper and iron. And copper is linked to LME. So the price is dollar denominated no matter what price you buy. Same thing, I am finding aluminum is now LME linked. Steel is still there, but that's minimum. So the if we go slightly at the back and create a structure understanding the price movement for utilities and then create a fund somewhere which probably can give a comfort to international people like MIGA to give a comfort to go to sub sovereign level, we'll be much more matched than trying to fight at a policy level. That's my personal feeling. Cool. No, I think we'll appreciate it and we'll have more of that offline as well. Uh, anybody else? Otherwise, I have uh, one more issue very rapidly to bring to the attention of my learned panelists for just uh, last few minutes, uh, which is regarding the financing. Uh, financing rests on three important parameters. One is the, the adequacy of it, the timely availability, and I think some of uh, the people who are in that industry where they need timely availability like Pinaki and others, they did bring out that issue. And the, the last but not the least is the cost effectiveness of it. So I think uh, I would like if you can share some of your experiences, how you've handled it, how you are uh, getting such, uh, I would say such pillar tariffs and how you are uh, able to execute and uh, make profits even with that. If uh, there are some special notes that you have, how you manage it, please some of you if you can share with our uh, uh, you know, delegates here as well. So maybe Gaurav again, very briefly though, but I'll start with you and then others can add. No, I, I mean to say we all know that uh, these tariffs, the way they are worked out today, uh, uh, a lot of uh, reason for getting these tariffs is uh, uh, some of the financial assumptions and one very key assumption is on uh, refinancing. Uh, refinancing is a very important uh, component which helps you you, know, you would see that the construction risk is out, you have an operational asset, your uh, your return, your cost of uh, debt should be lower, you should be able to get a better leverage now, earlier let's say 70-30 or a 75-25, you should be able to get some top up, move to 80-20, 85-15, uh, both these will give you the kicker and today uh, I can, uh, I can uh, tell you that with 100% certainty that every Better has these basic assumptions built in. Without this, we cannot uh, win these tenders. So that's that's one very really key input. But yeah, uh, you know, these are assumptions which will work sometimes, which won't work. We have seen what has happened uh, today. The entire financing in India on renewables is mainly done by NBFCs. We had this NBFC uh, crunch. Uh, liquidity crunch and uh, you know all the cost of debt has gone up uh, so it's, it's a challenge so so uh, you know we have to face it yeah. it's out the last part but i uh, anybody else who has some special notes to share here uh maybe mr i'll just like to add that the general i, mean, I have seen this uh, we discussed very often that uh, we hear of events being organized where we uh, ask the bank x uh, yes and no banks to uh, come and uh, commit uh, funds for the RE sector. Now, to my understanding, any bank or any, uh, any bank rate is keen to invest in a, uh, in, a, in a project where they have a show returns. So to say that uh, we want one bank to be committing a certain amount to the RE sector, I mean, a bank essentially wants to invest in good projects. Our challenge is essentially to develop good projects. 
Once we have good projects, there is no dearth of uh, uh, banks who would uh, be willing to offer uh, uh, money. Because as you know, I mean, the, 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 country, the, the world is flush with clients. There are points at negative rate of interest, zero rate of interest. The challenge that lies before us is to uh, clear the cobwebs of uncertainty, to uh, remove the risks, develop strong bankable projects. And if we do that, we would not have to request banks to give commitment letters that we should invest in that which is certain sector because we think it's good for the environment. I mean, environment is not banks concern. Uh, well, not the word bank. It's not the word bank's concern, but I'm talking about uh, <laughs> and commercial banks. So, uh, uh, commercial banks, uh, for them, you, it's our responsibility to give them good projects. And then money uh, is given. Yeah, sure. Not the last one, uh, just to clarify that uh, uh, the, the reason why the World Bank gets involved is A, because it is patient in some ways, and in another is what a good constitutes a good project for a sector which is expanding is, is a very important determinant for the government to get on with it. And we believe that as a what we were called previously, you know, lenders of the last resort, we believe that in a sector which is burgeoning. If we are able to set those parameters, and that has been the basis of our partnership with uh, Madhya Pradesh, with SECI, uh, with SBI, is to set ground rules which will make projects good. And incidentally, it takes care of the environment because we believe that at some scale, environment is going to be badly affected, or it takes land out of A particular economic activity into B particular economic activity, and that balance needs to be made for a country which has. A population density such as ours has is, is something which constitutes definition of a good project and therefore when, when we support projects with MPNRD or with SECI or with SBI on rooftops and you said something about one megawatt being more difficult at the start of your thing to 75 megawatts we believe that making those projects good and bankable is the role if we go out of business that is the best situation for a public financing, right? Mr. Shivasta already wants to get out and make public sell, uh, money not safe. It's the same for the World Bank, because the World Bank is eventually owned by the government of India and governments of 180-90 other countries. I don't remember what that number is. But making a good project is essential. And considerations such as foreign exchange rates, considerations such as availability of land, how do we dispose of anti-money led panels, all this constitutes a good project design. What assumptions we make about equity and debt ratios constitutes a good project design. So does thinking about people who will lose land for 30 years uh, constitutes a good project design. So that is the thought that we uh, people who want to make money out of things with, that a good project, and that is where I would like to supplement what uh, Shwastaji said, a good project is where all stakeholders, whether they produce the money, they produce the energy, or they consume the energy are better off than they were before when we started thinking about renewable energy at scale. That is what we should look for. Thank you very much. Uh, I must acknowledge uh, the role the World Bank has played. Someone mentioned about Assam, uh, the RESCO uh, patent. So the initiative in this uh, direction has been taken by the World Bank. That uh, I mean, uh, uh, we had Madhya Pradesh in Madhya Pradesh Assembly elections. So I was a little free at that time. So when I had uh, traveled to uh, Assam with the World Bank tree, and we have tried to have a similar uh, project coming up in Assam. We are similarly trying to Bihar. And uh, 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 even with Riva and the next 1500 megawatt project that we are coming up, uh, the World Bank's uh, assistance that has come to us, it goes far beyond the loan. A loan is just, uh, I mean, the final part of it. The, uh, it, it started the baseline study uh, with how to make the uh, project structure stronger. Uh, in each other respect, it has been a complete uh, partnership. And I've always said in all, uh, even to the bank senior officials whom sir I've met that in the government the biggest uh, you know uh, uh, reaction initial reaction comes from people is that word that word bank will it takes time. I mean I can say with, 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 uh, with the experience that we have had that it has been an absolutely seamless fast uh, uh, experience and it's one of the better experiences I've had uh, working with this consultation bank. I think a lot of burning uh, issues that have been discussed, some as usual have been left out. But I really thank all of you and especially this uh, great panel 
which almost uh, did a very heart to heart discussion on almost all the issues that uh, were uh, pertinent and uh, with uh, the limitation of time being on hand we actually have to come to the close of this session today and i would uh, request all of you to join me in appreciating the contribution of this lovely panelists all of them being uh, great specialists in their field please do join me in appreciating their contribution and time uh, thank you to all of you once again and i would uh, now request uh, anand to take back from here and guide us thank you very much uh, indeed uh, again a great uh, honor for me to share uh, the stage with uh, such high level dignitaries and uh, like to thank them for spending some very very valuable time uh, with us all of us in lighting us this morning uh, one thing i have always uh, said about this sector and i am proud about the fact that without a strong political and bureaucratic will the success of this sector and the things that has been happening would not have been possible and i am sure the entire business community will appreciate never ever we have seen uh, bureaucrats sitting so close and accessible to the industry player and i say this with a lot of pride because also i am coming from the state of madhya pradesh so ladies and gentlemen big round of applause for manish shivastav ji and uh, the state of madhya pradesh the stakeholders uh, here thank you very much i'd uh, like to request uh, manu sir to please uh, pr present mementos on behalf of the organizers to all the uh, speakers on the stage please Thank you.